Hello friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And today I'm going to be giving you an update on my fermented apples as well as going over some questions I've been getting a lot of lately on the homemade vinegars. So starting with the apples, um, if you haven't seen that video that I did on preserving apples, you can find that right up here. And I think I forgot to mention in that video that I have also canned just plain apples like this before, just can them like, you know, a hot water bath. And I personally didn't care for the way they turned out. Um, so I have, I don't plan on ever doing that again, but who knows down the road, I might find a better method that might make them turn out better. But I find that freezing them or dehydrating them works best if you're making apple pie, cobblers, apple betties, things like that. Um, but this, this, I'm trying the fermented apples um, just for the sake of seeing how they turned out for the health benefits and just snacking on them as is. And if you saw that video, you'll see that I started one batch with cinnamon and one jar without the cinnamon. Now the reason for that was I was really in the mood for the cinnamon apple thinking that would taste really good, which it does, but I was also concerned that the cinnamon, knowing the properties of it, would affect the fermentation process. And so I went and looked it up and I found that it can slow the process. However, these fermented pretty equally. So um, I will go ahead and open the jars here. I, I've already tried one of each and it's, it's not bubbling right now because I did just open it a little bit ago. Um, but this is very bubbly and I would say it's pretty close to being equal to this one here. Now this one is really bubbly. I'm not going to bother holding up to the camera because it seems like you can't really hear it. But um, they, and I noticed that when I ate one of these, it had a more fizzy quality to the inside of it than the ones with the cinnamon. However, they still did get pretty bubbly, pretty close to being the same within the same amount of time. So. Um, I would say maybe if you're going to do the cinnamon apple, just give it, give it another day or two. In fact, I want these, even though it's been the three days, I'm going to go ahead and let these sit on the counter and ferment just a little bit longer because I want to see how they taste after now, that. Now these are my cedar and my peppermint vinegars that I started about a month ago. Well, right on a month ago from today. And you can find that video right up here on how I did that. Now, it was more of an experiment to see if it would even work, and what I'm finding is it's working great. However, these are both still quite bubbly, which means it's still in the process of turning to vinegar. Now, I've tasted them both, and I, I, I have to tell you, I'm really amazed. I tasted them just to see how the flavor, to see if they were getting tart enough, because that's how I check to see if my vinegar is ready. Now, um, I didn't make these for the purpose of using as a, you know, to, to use in food, I'm making them for the purpose of cleaning with. But I tell you, the peppermint, I cannot get over how strong the peppermint flavor is in this, and it is really, really good. So this would be good for making herbal extract. I can see doing this, especially for my multivitamin, multi-mineral extract that we like to take as a supplement in the morning. Um, this would be really good. And if you haven't seen that video, I'll go ahead and link to that right up here. Now the cedar, <laughs> this one actually tasted really good. I was surprised. So, um, but I'm making this for cleaning and I don't know what I would use it for as far as eating other than making, if I was going to do that, another extract like I would with the peppermint. Um, but, and it's going to be real high in vitamin C anyway. Uh, so that would just add even more to it. Now I'll go ahead and show you what the tops of them look like. Now the cedar, interestingly enough, doesn't really have much at the top. You can see a little bit of the white layer there um, around the edges, but nothing on top. There's absolutely no mold or mildew of any kind. And, but there's also very little sediment at the bottom of this one. There is some, but it is, it is tart like vinegar. I think it could just be a little bit more tart. And since it is still bubbly, I definitely want to leave it. I'm going to try leaving it for maybe another week. And I, at that point, you know, if I feel like they need longer, I like to sit them on my counter so I can see them and, um, 
rather than leaving them on top of the refrigerator where I'll forget about them. So I can just keep tracking them and seeing how they're doing. Now the peppermint, the peppermint does also does not have any mold, but it has that white layer on the top that is the mother forming. That is not, you know, it's kind of a gelatinous looking stuff and it's certainly nothing to be afraid of. And you can see at the bottom the sediment, which is also the mother forming. Now you may most likely have your mother forming at the bottom of your jar, most of it. Um, as far as getting like the, the SCOBY uh, that I was mentioned in another video, that may not happen until after you strain out whatever your herbs or fruit are and then put it away for storage and then maybe come back a month or two later and find it, um, find this big thick SCOBY like thing floating on the top. And that's, that's good and nothing to be afraid of. And here's another one that is just about ready to go. And this is another floral vinegar because I've, I've been trying to make them, I like making them best out of fresh flowers. So I try to get all these done right away. And these are the ones I like to use for washing my hair with. And you can see it's got a nice thick sediment layer on the bottom. And the top, again, it's funny how sometimes I get mold on top and sometimes I don't. And I didn't bother covering this with anything. Those are just the flowers. You can see the lavender and the, you know, they're just dry on top. No mold. So sometimes you'll get mold, sometimes you won't. It just depends. And again, if you do, you just carefully lift that out and toss it. And then, and even if some of it drops into the vinegar, the vinegar is going to kill it. So it's nothing to be afraid of. Um, and you can see the petals here. These are the rose petals. They were red when I put them in there. Now all the redness is in the vinegar and the, the uh, petals are almost white. All right, now back to some more questions I've been having about the vinegar. Um, some people have been asking about refrigeration and I keep forgetting to talk about this and I apologize. Now, I don't refrigerate my vinegar ever. However, if you're not gonna use your vinegar up within a year, then you may wanna refrigerate it. I go through lots because I have lots of purposes that I use it for. Like the floral vinegar is mostly for my hair wash, but when I run out of that, then I'll move on to some of the fruit vinegars or even I could see using either one of these, the peppermint or the cedar for washing my hair. In fact, the peppermint would probably feel really good and very stimulating to the scalp. And um, I think both would make it, make my hair smell really nice, especially the cedar. And it does have a very strong cedar taste and smell. I was actually surprised. Now, um, so that's going to be entirely up to you if you want to refrigerate it. I would think because it is a homemade vinegar and it is not distilled, um, you may want to keep it in cold storage. Now for me, I keep mine in a dark cabinet in our pantry room, which is my oldest son's room. And after he moved out, we turned his room into our pantry. So, and then we have a cabinet in there that um, I, anything that I definitely want no light to get to, I keep in there. And that is where I keep, I store my vinegar. And we keep that room cool. We never have heat in that room. So um, it's just a really good place to store it. And I, I don't have any issues. Now, um, the only problem I've ever had with vinegar in storing it was with the apple vinegar I made from frozen cores and peels. I found with the frozen blackberries and the frozen apple peels and cores that I just didn't get a good vinegar. Initially, it seemed fine, but then after I put it in storage, this is the apple I'm talking about, it, um, it lost all its tartness and it developed a mold layer on top, which I thought was really odd. And I, cause I'd never had that happen before. And then I remembered cause it happened to several of my big jars and I had done a lot of vinegar like that. Then I remembered that that was the vinegar I made from the frozen apple peels and cores. And the reason I had done that was I was getting so many apples that year and I already had tons and tons of vinegar going. So I thought I'm just going to freeze these and make vinegar later in the year. Well, it didn't, it didn't work. Now, the funny thing was the blueberry vinegar I made from frozen blueberries turned out great. It was one of the best vinegars I've had, one of the most tart vinegars I've had and within 30 days, and it was great. So I, I really don't know what the difference was. The blackberries was the same issue. It, it at least came along, but then it never 
fully finished the process. That was the one I had sitting here for a while. I finally just dumped it because it just, it never, it never continued on to really turn into vinegar so I just tossed it and we'll see how my blackberry vinegar turns out from the fresh berries I've made it before out of fresh berries and it turned out great so these should turn out good but it would seem that using frozen fruits for making vinegar you're gonna have um, varying results so just keep that in mind you may not want to take a chance with it if it's a if it's an expensive type fruit like you know pineapple or blueberries or strawberries and it's been frozen you may want to use that for something else okay so other questions I have is um, if you saw my peach video the canning peaches I mean a lot of people came in there asking what do you do with all your different flavored vinegars well I don't make I don't make them to be flavored. I it, That's not really the point. I make them because that is what I have on hand to make vinegar out of. I'm canning peaches and so I'm going to make, I'm going to use the peels to make peach vinegar. I'm processing apples so I'm going to use the apple peels to make vinegar. Or I've done pears before and pear vinegar is excellent too. Yes, they all have a different flavor and they're all very good. You know, the, the peach is clearly going to have a little bit of peach flavor. The pineapple is very pineapple-y. Um, but it just depends on what I'm working with at the time. And I go, because I go through a lot of vinegar, I just keep making a lot. Now, I use them all the same way. Now, I'll find that with, as I've said before, with my raisin vinegar, that one really is my favorite for stir-frying. But for everything else, I'll use them all the same for making salad dressings, for, at, you know, including, you know, like an oil vinegar dressing, Italian type dressing, or the ranch dressing. I use any of these, any of those fruit vinegars I use when I'm making bread. Um, not my fermentation starter bread, which I'm going to get to that in a minute. Um, but when I'm just making a regular yeast bread or, or baking powder type breads like pancakes, biscuits, I'll add a little bit of any of those vinegars, whichever one is ready to go and I have on hand. I'll add about a tablespoon or so to the batch because it's going to help with the rise and it's also going to help preserve the bread a little bit longer because we all know that homemade breads tend to go bad quicker. They get stale faster, they mold faster, and the vinegar is just going to help extend it just a little bit longer. And plus it just makes it a little bit more healthy. I use, I also use any of those vinegars for when I'm sprouting or soaking any kinds of grains such as my beans um, for making chili or beans and cornbread or when I'm soaking my wheat berries for grinding into flour. And you can find a video on that right up here. Um, other things I use the vinegar for, well, as you know, I, I tested out my floral vinegar as a cleaning vinegar just to see how well it would do and was amazed at how well it did. I thought it worked just as well as the store-bought distilled vinegar, yet it smelled better. And that is why I made these was to try that way. So I'm really anxious to give it a try. So I'll still do another update on these down the road. I just need to give them a little bit more time. And you can also use vinegar for washing your clothes. I even tried putting that floral vinegar in a load of laundry and it seemed to work really good. It's gonna, and it's also gonna come out nice and um, you're not gonna have any residue left behind when you do and that. here is my multi-mineral, multivitamin extract made from homegrown herbs. And which vi vinegar did I use in this one? I don't remember. I think, I think this one's pineapple vinegar. And I'm just, just about empty. I need to fill this up again. But, um, and by the way, if you're interested in the infinity jars, you can find a link to these below. I link to these in every video. But anyway, the, the vinegars I like to use for making um, herbal extracts of different kinds, mostly for taking internally. Um, you're getting that good health benefit from the vinegar, as well as whatever herbs you've put in the vinegar to extract the goodness out of those. So it's, it's just a really good, it's a lot better than buying store-bought supplements. It's a lot healthier for you and you know exactly what's going into it. I think that's pretty much, I've covered most of the basics I use the vinegar for, but again, all the fruit vinegars I use the same. I don't, um, uh, the raisin's the only one I'm a little more particular with when it comes to stir fry. But I, if I'm out of raisin, I'll use any of the other fruit ones. And really, it's good. It's just the raisin's my favorite for that. So um, now moving on, um, those were the two main things I want to talk about was the apples and the vinegar. 
But um, I also want to show you a little bit of some other things I have going on around here. And that is, I made, I'll show you right here, you know, another little loaf of bread. And by the way, this is my waxed, my waxed fabric for wrapping things in instead of using plastic wrap. And you can find a video to that right up here, though I do plan on doing an update video. Um, this one I made yesterday, and this is whole wheat, entirely whole wheat. Um, and this one turned out the best of the bread that I've made yet. And here's what I did different. Now, I still didn't get a really good rise on the initial rise. Um, however, when I baked it, it rose just fine. Now, the difference was I started it like, like I did in the video, and you can find that video right up here. But instead of doing it the next day, I gave it a couple of more days, adding a little bit of flour into the jar each day and letting it just to continue to ferment for a few days. And it made a really, really good bread. And I know that's going to be the healthiest one because not only is it whole organic white wheat that's been fresh ground and then used up right away or frozen and then used, but it's also been fermented and, well, I soaked the berry, the wheat berries first, so that made them healthier yet. But then it was fermented in my fermentation starter, and it just it gave it a really nice flavor. And the other thing I did different on that bread is I decided to try the raspberry fermentation starter, and it worked really good, and it tastes really good too. So now I'm kind of torn. The raspberry, the or the the raisin, they're both really good for for um, using as your bread yeast. Um, so anyway, I just started this batch here a little bit ago, and um, what you'll find is the longer you let it sit, the stronger that ferment scent is going to get, and it's going to—it's just going to smell wonderful. You're practically going to want to eat it out of the jar before you even make bread out of it. But it did—it did not give it a sour taste like you would expect, because I actually was only going to do a three-day process. But then I got busy the next the, the day I was going to turn it into bread. And then the day after that, I totally forgot about it. And so I'm like, ah! So I went ahead yesterday and got that bread made. And it was really good. So even a five-day process might be the best. And it wasn't sour. It's not, it wasn't, didn't have that tartness like a sourdough would. As long as you stay ahead on it and you always have a batch going, you know, you may, if you like to have bread every day and you want to just do one little loaf like I do, then you may want to have several jars going at a time for each day and then mark them accordingly. Um, but anyway, I'm really happy with that. So I'm going to continue doing that. But I will also do, as I promised, eventually I'll be doing like just a regular, uh, my, my own bread recipe that's made from a powdered yeast that you buy at the store using but also using my homemade vinegar and um, it's that is great for if you need something for a much quicker process um, it's not going to be quite as healthy as this one but it does make a great fluffy bread and it's still very good for you and um, and it's a lot quicker so and then in here I decided to try something new this year well new to me it's not a new I, concept and I've known about it for a long time but I'm getting a lot more tomatoes than I expected. And since I'd already bought those other tomatoes and made a whole bunch of salsa, and now I've got my tomatillos coming in, I'm making salsa out of that. Um, I'm taking, and I still have a bunch of dehydrated tomatoes from last year, and you can find a video on that right up here. Um, what I'm doing with the rest right now that are coming in, well, maybe not the rest, but a bunch of them, is I'm processing them up and then dehydrating them on my fruit roll-up trays on my Nesco dehydrator. So basically, I'm not processing, processing this into a powder. These are just tomato flakes is what they are. And so I tried it the other day when I made some pizza sauce. I took some tomato flakes and threw them in my sauce and it thickened my sauce up really nice with something totally natural and straight from my garden. Some other things I have going on over here, you can see I have my cocoa butter out. I'm going to make a batch of orange uh, chocolate. And then I'm out of hand soap so I got a bar of my homemade lard soap, and I'm going to be, I need to get several more jars because I it'll, it'll make enough to fill up about three or four of these jars. And I'm going to make a batch of hand soap for each of the bathrooms in the kitchen. And um, you can find a video on how to do that right up here. And also 
on my basic chocolate. I'll, I've got a couple of different recipes out. I'll link to that up here. But I'll be doing some, some more chocolate update videos. Um, probably show you how I do this one. And then the other one is the peppermint chocolate. That's been our favorite so far. And I'll do a video on that um, later on. So be watching for that. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this kind of a Q&A and a little bit of this and that video and that maybe you learned something new and if you have any more questions or suggestions go ahead and put them in comments below.